Well, after uh, much technical difficulties with our, um, and by the way, we're on the air now, Brad, with, uh, <laughs> after all the technical difficulties of trying to get this Cathar on the air, it's just been a nightmare, but anyway, here we go to our show. You're tuning into the Maroon 5 lookalikes of the Temple of Gnosis. Welcome to the shipwreck that is called Aeon Arcanum, where secrets are revealed. Hidden mysteries are made manifest. Today is April S the 18th in the year of our taskmaster, Yaldi Baldi, 2013. We are proudly seducing young Orthodox virgins, one show at a time. This is the AA for your soul, the vibrator for your spiritual clitoris. Y'all respite from the Game of Thrones Orthodox nightmare. Awaken, O oh sleeper. Rise from your slumber. Shake off your drunken monkey suit and do the Fandango. We are not endorsed or funded by toll collectors, nor do we accept sacrifice. Our astral guest, Johnny Bynum, just couldn't quite make it. Your ass can belong to that dirty Catholic polishing his bishop, but your soul belongs to Aeon Arcanum, the Bermuda Triangle of Dangerous Ideas. So come join us and follow us down the rabbit hole to escape the Inquisition, only to find out the Endura is the only way back home. If you're starving for home-cooked gnosis, you've come to the right place. And when you're done being a neo-gnostic or a new ager and worshiping at the shrine of the severed penis of Rasputin, come fucking join us, even though we've said that a million times. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Doing great, finally. As you can see, I cussed in the intro because I'm... You just, just don't give a fuck. Frustrated. I don't, I don't give a <laughs> shit. We're crazy. We're wild and crazy Gnostics. We're the great powers. Okay, today we'd like to introduce someone who's going to be a new member of the show that's going to be part of the team, and that is Brad. How you doing, Brad? Brad thank you for there. having me. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I love it. He's so. Yes, I'm. <laughs> so, uh, what, what, what do you think about uh, all the uh, 50 minutes that we wasted trying to get this? Actually, an hour and a half wasted trying to get this together. What? What? Someone else joining us? Oh, I don't know. That's confusing. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna. Sorry, be I was having a little trouble with the archons. <laughs> we decided. Did you did you did you call through your phone booth to get out of the matrix? Yes. Well, we decided we're just gonna talk about Simon Magus. So, let's do it. Let's just talk about Simon Magus. And first, Brad, just introduce yourself to the people, so you're not as mysterious as your picture of John the Baptist's severed head. Well, I'm basically just your token Hylic, and I'm here to assist in correctly helping everybody know what a Hylic really is. <laughs> what is a Hylic, Brad? Well, pretty much you just do whatever you want to do, you know, like old Crowley said, and, you know, eat a lot of the Taco Bell. Because <laughs> it's not real food. So, Alex, why don't you ask Brad some questions for us while I dig through papers and try to improvise. So, Brad, what brought you to Gnosticism? Or how do you define Gnosticism? The Da Vinci Code, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like all Gnostics. <laughs> Even Valentinus. What's, what's your Who's favorite... Who's a big Dan Brown fan. What's your favorite Kool-Aid? Hmm. Highlight Kool-Aid? Probably grape. <laughs> yes. You like purple drink? It's grape, called purple uh, drink. Psychic Kool-Aid. Purple juice. Pneumatic Kool-Aid. So when you're not a mime, Brad, what else do you do for a living? That was that was a rhetorical question. So actually I'm unemployed. Being I the Hylic be, <laughs> being, being the Hylic Neo Gnostic that you are, um, what do you think about Simon Magus, you know, your um the great power that gave birth to you.
I tend to uh, side with Harold Bloom in his book of J, where he tries to apologize for Jehovah's poor behavior and try to say that he's the most human of all biblical characters, and that we should all aspire to be like Yahweh, being both good and evil. <laughs> so, in a, in, a, in a normal day, what do you do to be as good and evil as you possibly can? If that question made any sense. What what are some good and evil? What are some things you do that you consider both good and evil? See there. Well, I'll watch this podcast, for instance, and then afterwards I'll go over to Pornhub and you know masturbate. <laughs> okay, I, I, it's killing me. I gotta ask. What do you think? What 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 do you think about Toll House Cookies? You know, that's a very controversial issue right now, especially in the Orthodox community. You have somebody like old Grandpa Lazar, and he's, I don't know what his problem is. He might have diabetes, not allowed to eat Toll House cookies, I'm not sure. But, yes, it is a Gnostic heresy, but they are fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Which ingredient makes it heretical? Is it the fudge chocolate chips, or is it... Um... The dough, or is it the sugar? What what what's Gnostic? What's particularly you know that's more of like Gnostic. an esoteric interpretation. You know, a lot of people <laughs> like to focus on the chocolate chips, but the esoteric underlying heresy is actually the gold, the brown sugar. It's the brown sugar, like the Rolling Stones song. Oh, that's why they taste so good. It makes perfect sense. So what what do Toll House cookies contribute to your theology? What what, what how do they take you to that next uh, over that next spiritual hurdle towards the hot pleroma of love? Well, you know, I got into a terrible car accident a few years ago, and I had my own near death experience. You know, they call them NDE, NDE for short. And during that experience, I actually I saw the I saw the tunnel of light and everything like that. And at the end, <laughs> at the end was the beginning, of course, right? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was practically a bake sale. They were selling cookies and. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Uh, okay. They had a bake sale in heaven. And that but I didn't have that quarter. I didn't have that quarter to buy that cookie I wanted, so I know that I'm going to die and go to hell. Right, because, because you're know, not going to have the, the total, aroma, the, the fullness in you. So I wish I was an Orthodox, you know, because Jesus could just dispel them, you know, you know, get those money chasing <laughs> cookie bake sale fucking <laughs> demons out of the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think about transgender people? Because that is something that's an issue that goes hand in hand with the with the Toll House cookies. Because apparently, transgender people really love to eat Toll House cookies. They love brown sugar. It seems to be like their ultimate goal in life is to actually become a black girl. Okay, that was a little racy, but it wasn't racy. Oh uh, well, I think I would have to agree with Lazar here. You know, because you know Jesus, he's a very very powerful agent force in this universe and we have a view I really don't know why Lazar I really don't know why Lazar put the Lazar picture up advocating for this surgery because Jesus is a very powerful energy and if you you're not supposed to even have sex so what's the point of having your genitalia changed if you can't right if Jesus sex? is such a powerful energy why can't he Jesus and everything will be a okay I mean right like, can't can't Jesus just change your sex for you I mean, couldn't he? Couldn't you pray to be born again as a different sex? Or maybe that's what being born again is—is is having an operation. Yeah, well, you know, God doesn't help amputees, and he doesn't help transgendered either. So, why doesn't he help amputees? Because he loves pain. So he's a masochist. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess you can put it that way. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, well, we can't can't be so generalized about it. Um, 
Brad, if you were a Roman Catholic, if you were the Pope, if you were the Pope, you just got elected as your Francis the first. You'd be Francis Bacon the first, of course, because you're a Gnostic. But <laughs> if you got elected Pope, what would be your first act as Pope? I would legalize sodomizing young boys. Wow, you are you are definitely a Simonian. I mean, because there is this kind of an inner circle in Catholicism where they want to be exclusive to the access to young spiritual boys, and I think it should be open to the public. You know, just like the Gnostics did. Brad, how are spiritual babies created? Which seems to be an overarching well, part of your It's a theology. very complex subject. I'm not, an, I'm not an authority on the subject like, like Samuel on We Are, but at the same time, I'll tell you this. It's going to be very uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, I'll just tell you like this. You're going to get blue balls. <laughs> How the babies appear, I do not know. Are they going to be like the dosa? Is that what Jesus was? Was Jesus just a spirit baby, you know? <laughs> Because the key word in traditionism is douche. We or might have a point. Maybe that's the whole thing. Maybe that's what they're going with there. You know, we were trying to say that Jesus was the product of blue ball spirit baby procreation. <laughs> Brad, the cunt the comedian. So, hey. Alex, why don't you uh, why don't you pick Brad's enormous brain? So, Brad. And no, he doesn't call his penis his brain. So don't brain. be uncomfortable. So, so Brad, what do you think of Aleister Crowley? What's your opinion on him? Well, I think he was a really misunderstood individual. Um, yes, he was into anal sexual m mysteries, if you want to call it that, in the 11th degree of the OTO. It's basically exclusively homosexuals. No, this isn't a joke. This is true. <clears throat> And I think that's very misogynistic, and I don't agree with it. However, I do agree with a lot of his political positions. He had a lot of libertarian takes on a lot of social issues, and I do agree with him with that. What about, uh, what do you think of the, his religion in general? Like the Book of the Law, Thelema, and all that kind of stuff? Um, it's interesting. I think he has a lot of insight into a lot of these subjects, but a lot of people have problems with the whole Gnostic label being attached to the OTO and a Thelema, but I do think there are some Gnostic elements to it. You know, he wasn't anti-cosmic, he wasn't world-denying, he appreciated the body for what it was, so if you're into that flavor of Gnosticism, you're definitely not going to like Crowley. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, like the material world is like this awesome place. You know, air, you know, the, the 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 body is like a, more of a a vessel for sexual energies and all this kind of stuff. I mean, he was definitely into facilities and all that, and you know, Abraxas, obviously, and and then it's Gnostic mass. So, so Brad, do you um do you cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub? I'm just curious. No, I want Beelzebub inside of me. It's a very potent energy. <laughs> I like how you chose the word potent. For those here who know how that word is historically used, that was hilarious. Um, if you were going to send a dream to Pilate's wife, like Simon supposedly did, or, well, Simon sent dreams, but Jesus sent the dream to Pilate's wife, supposedly, and they're somehow not the same person. Um... Since it was a popular practice to send dreams, it's apparently a Gnostic practice and even an Orthodox practice. Um, what dream would you send to Pilate's wife? Well, Jesus is waiting to be arraigned. I don't know. It depends on how attractive she was. Supposedly, she was really hot. At least she was in the. I think she was in the Passion of Christ. Wasn't she some hot chick? I don't know. She was hot in one of these Jesus movies. Well, then I don't even have to answer that question now, do I? I am a high like after all. <laughs> the sins of the flesh. Um, for, if for I was you, in power and I was a prophet, I would be marrying everybody's wife to myself. So why do you think Marcion asked uh, people to uh, get rid of their wives? And why do you think Paul and like the Acts of Paul went around like 
getting these ladies to leave their wives and told me the Gnostics supposedly got women to leave their wives. I mean, men to leave their wives. Sorry. I, th apparently, they did allow lesbian intercourse in, but um, only if I edited Okay, I have, a, I have a simple answer for you. I have a simple answer to all, all these questions. Mm -hmm. He had a small penis, and he couldn't get a woman. Ah. Mm. Mm. That's all. That's all is that mystery there. So, do you think that if someone is born through fornication, that that makes them a sinner? I'm literally just reading random crap off this paper and turning it into questions. No. Okay. If that question sucked, um, if you were a political, if you ran for president of the United States as a Hylic, and you had to have a Hylic Toll House cookie campaign. Would you give out free Toll House cookies to all the Orthodox? No, I'd be a little more lenient towards them. I'd allow them to practice their own religion. If they don't want to eat cookies, that's up to them. So, would you would you make or, or would you make it known to the world the age-old secret that's been hidden for millennia that the uh, Toll House Cookie was actually this long scientific run-on project of the Gnostics for centuries to create the perfect wafer of Christ. I mean, is that what you use in the Eucharist? Do you use the Toll House Cookie? It looks like you use John the Baptist's head, according to your picture, but... Okay, he doesn't like the question. Okay, <laughs> if you were Muhammad, would you have fucked that 12-year-old girl? I think you should ask him a question, Alex, because he doesn't like mine. Wow, okay. So, Brad, <clears throat> are you the second coming of Christ? <laughs> I'm the third coming, actually. <laughs> the third coming, the fourth coming. Wow, I guess... Brad could, you, Brad, could you explain why Christ is always coming? What was the other thing we said? <laughs> There's so much nasty stuff in the news, if you read it wrong. Apparently he disappeared. Oh, that's convenient. Awesome. <laughs> this is definitely not a serious episode, but, you know, for the few people who got to view it before we take it down, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully they enjoyed laughing. I oh, know. <laughs> I'm re-inviting uh, Johnny. Watch, he ends up joining, and like, this is how the episode started. <laughs> I know. And then it gets all serious and shit. Well, this is the second coming of Brad right now, so apparently that answers the question. So, Brad, are you the second coming of Christ? No. How should... Um... What what is the uh, what's what's a proper uh, spiritual way um, to do stuff like what 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 do you see as spiritual practices? Do you condone like abusing your body and living out in the woods naked and shit? Spiritual practice consists of not a bed, not taking a shower, opening up a can of Pepsi out of the fridge, drinking that, then making a pot of coffee in an old coffee pot that hasn't been cleaned in three weeks, then going outside to smoke a few cigarettes, <laughs> then you go inside, then you open your Bible randomly, read a random passage, And then you play Skyrim? Then you go onto YouTube, you watch random videos for hours on end, and that's about it. And and what particular channel do you enjoy watching to abuse your mind the most? The Young Turks, because I get off <laughs> on watching liberals. <laughs> your turn, Alex. What do you think of uh, Muhammad? I think Muhammad is a symbol of the self 
in the Jungian sense, just like Jesus is, just like Muhammad is, just like every other biblical character to Jungians. I think he is the symbol of the self. And enough said. I don't even have to justify it. Jung said so, therefore it's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I rest my, Brad, rest his case. He's like, Carl Jung loves me, this I know. For his essays tell me so. <laughs> what do you think of Gerald Massey's lectures? Hello. Okay, Brad, what we really want you to tell us about is um your your the religion that you founded. Which supposedly you founded yesterday. You didn't found a religion, is that so? Really? Brad, what do you think of Acharya S? Um, <clears throat> she's pretty much run of the mill. I mean, I've seen so many of her. I mean, you, you might as well just read Jordan Maxwell, in all honesty. But um, <clears throat> hey, what's one the... thing I can say about her is that she's just, her her name is really stupid. Yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. her fake name. What? Hey, what's what's Archbishop Lazar's real name? And could you tell us a little bit about his past and his history with the Eastern Orthodox Church? His real name is Ronald Haller, and what he's not it? Serbian, Taylor? and he's supposedly a homosexual deadbeat father. It's Ronald Haller. Oh, my God. Um, why do you think he is jealous or hateful towards Seraphim Rose, even though the guy's dead? And they believe in praying for the dead and respecting them, supposedly. Well, there's a conspiracy theory in the Orthodox circles that he doesn't like toll houses because um, Seraphine Rose wrote a book called The Soul After Death, right. which goes into the whole toll house, the whole toll house thing and the reason he's so much against that is because uh, Seraphine Rose rejected Lazar's advances, his sexual advances, and that's why he's against the Toll House. That's just how he goes about attacking Seraphine. Um, hmm. Interesting stuff, Brad. Very insightful. I didn't really know any of this. It's amazing. Could you tell us what your source for this information is? Some random message board. <laughs> <laughs> Was he uh, excommunicated from the church? Yes. So, what do you think of internet Gnostics besides us? We're special. <clears throat> yes, we are. Not, not just because we ride the short bus still. No. We're writing it to our retirement. I think they're a bunch of social misfits, and they try to compensate for their lack of social contact and prestige by acting like know-it-alls. That makes perfect sense. Hmm. Hmm. I see that in my own life. No, <laughs> Actually, I don't, but I figured, hey, it'd be funny. No, actually, I get awards at work and do well, so... Hmm. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, when some when you've got Eastern Orthodox people on here making what six hundred videos a week, something like that, and having twenty different channels and <laughs> all these crazy stories about how they were Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, Satanists, Luciferians, Hermeticists, whatever they were last week, you know, and then you get these Orthodox like like an anonymous person whose name we won't mention that Alex knows um, or has interacted with who's what, a Catholic? One second, and then they're a fucking a deist, which makes no fucking sense. Brad, can you tell us what you think about deism? <clears throat> well, I don't really have a problem with deism. It's kind of like a lazy position. It's like kind of like basically just saying you're agnostic without accepting the fact that there is no God. 
Anyway, I would say that if you're a Gnostic Catholic deist, that's like being a Buddhist wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what Lazar is, a Buddhist wizard. What, what about that dancing bishop? Nathaniel. Oh yeah, Brother Nathaniel is uh, a man born Jewish, and I guess he has some kind of mental disorder. He was homeless after he lost his job. He went to his local synagogue for assistance. And I guess he had some kind of manic episode where he was running around wearing a rainbow yarmulke. This is this is true. I'm not making this yeah, up. Yeah, with a crucifix. And then the Jews were obviously kind of like, what the hell's going on with this He even guy? has a Catholic so After they didn't Ro help him, he decided he Roman to become Catholic an anti-Zionist. He has a Roman Catholic huh? crucifix and he's Orthodox. It makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Do you, what do you think about Constantine? And like uh, you know, the persecution of the Gnostics in the fourth century. Yeah, I think Constantine was a pseudo Christian. Obviously, just total douche, pretty much. So it'll be welcome to our latest segment of Ask Brad. <laughs> Look, that old show, Ask Ashley, whatever the fuck it was. Oh man. So, Alex, uh, why don't you uh, give us your take on all this stuff? Hi, I'm David Witham with Pius <laughs> Oh, no, God. <laughs> As always. His last name sounds retarded, too. His arguments okay. are retarded. What do you think about Zombie Gets Chris? She's just a stupid feminist broad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And none of this is slander. This is actually supposedly all true, according to our sources. According to his sources. Um, this stuff's all true. It's pretty crazy. But um, No, I don't really have an opinion of her. I remember when she first came onto the atheist scene, the atheist, so-called atheist community on YouTube, right. like five or six years ago, whatever. Right. You know, I was kind of like, oh, everybody was going towards her. It's like, oh, she's so hot. I'm going to listen to her. And I was kind of bored by her videos, to be honest. Yeah, it's like this other lady is like all so, happy looking. She's hot. I really don't have much of an opinion of her. Uh, where do you think Einstein's brain is, and and where do you think uh, Rasputin's severed penis is? Do you think that's really a severed penis, or do you think it's a severed penis of Osiris? What's the deal with that? These the Rasputin penis is as real as the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> Science proves it. <laughs> um. Hmm. What else is there? Oh, what do you think about the Old Testament prophecies? Generally speaking. Can you repeat the question? What What do you think of the Old Testament prophecies, generally speaking, not specifically? Now you can pick anyone you want if you want to talk about it, but... Yeah, they're too worldly. Do, what do you think of the singularity idea about man becoming machines like in Terminator? Um, I don't really know. I, I think a lot will be missed about the human condition as it is right now. I know this is kind of like an anti-Gnostic Right, like urinating. People I forget how good it felt Conflict and everything that's going on in the world. You know that the sense of life will be lost when you can just buy a pill and make yourself more intelligent or, or replace a limb or increase this or that instead of just going through the pain. Yeah, I know I sound like a Catholic. Sorry. <laughs> Catholic Kool-Aid. Oh, that's because you took the fucking red pill. Clearly. Was it the red pill? I think it was the red pill. You took the red pill, didn't you? I had a prescription, damn it! Yalda Bayoff gave me a prescription. <laughs> I took the blue pill. Dr. Baldy. I'm still in a... It was the blue pill that left you behind, huh? I got it mixed up. I hate when that happens. Which one did I take? <laughs> what do you think? Zoloft, beneficial or demiurgical poison? 
So what's your, what's your take on uh, having a doppelganger, familiar spirit, or a, you know, twin thing, twin flame? What's your take on that? Do I have a blonde streak in my hair? It sure as hell looks like it. It's an it's interesting concept. I mean, I don't really know if it's true or not. I mean, I see it more psychological. It's more of a psychological thing than more of a literalistic, metaphysical concept. Right. So, okay, since well, this isn't going to be the Simon Magus episode, obviously, this is Ask Brad, a special short segment of A on Arcanum, just because we had nothing to fucking do, and we just figured we'd let people see the stupid shit we talk about. Absolutely has nothing to do with shit, but but it's hilarious. Um, yeah, I could listen to you guys yap on all day. <laughs> so how many children did Mary and Jesus have, according to... Uh, According to, um, of course, our, our Bible, the Da Vinci Code, because, you know, all Gnostics, we worship at the Shrine of Rasputin's Severed Penis and read Da Vinci Code. And Baffin, we worship Ten Baffin. children, each representing one of the spears on the Tree of Life. And yes, <laughs> each one of the children represent the self in Jungian psychology. Oh, my God. So they were his first thoughts of his mind. So he was Simon Magus. What do you, what do you think sorcery is, Brad? What's sorcery, and, and, and do you practice sorcery? To quote Alistair Crowley, magic is change in conformity with will. So when I put a microwave pizza in the microwave and turn it on, that's magic. Yes, that's actually true. That's what they actually say. Yeah. That's their apologetic for magic right. to uh, make it right. seem more rational. Like Bob Alon, that's what he says. He if says, I pick uh, up a lighter magic. and light a cigarette, that's magic. When you take a, what about when you take a piss? What, is that magic? No, you know what magic would have that's been? Sor sor this is why I'm convinced you're not a fucking sorcerer or not a very good one. Because if you were, we would have been able to get that Cathar on here. Just through sheer tyranny of will, it didn't happen. So I think that pretty much just qualifies you as a sorcerer. So the Orthodox can talk all the crap they want. Brad is not a sorcerer. Shut up. <laughs> to show how Gnostic we are, we should just all be bitter right now and just talk shit about Cathars. You know, because it's a very Gnostic thing to do. Just be bitter, be like that motherfucker. Right. How can a baker feed everyone under heaven? This guy's a crackpot. <laughs> Christ cookies, what? Um, Brad, how many of the Pauline epistles, because we know you're a vampire, how many of the Pauline epistles did you take part in forging? Actually, all of them are forged. There are no legitimate Pauline epistles. Paul never existed. Paul was actually Peter. Peter is Paul. That makes perfect sense. Now figure that one out and write a thousand page book, Eisenman. <laughs> you see... Peter was Paul, and Paul was Peter, and Peter was Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene was Thomas, and Thomas was John, and they're all the same person. Right. Right. And serpents are dogs. And I think dogs a lot of people evil. like Christian history because you can pretty much just like find all these like inconsistencies and then just write in a thousand page books about it and be like, Yeah, that's See? the easiest thing to do. I don't know how anyone ever finishes those books, though, man. I couldn't sit there and write a thousand-page book. It's so boring. I could write a 25-page book, and it will be great. Yeah, I don't think Eisenman is very credible because he went on this, like, public access show with some, like, Essene group, some, like, neo Essene group. Did you see oh, that? Yeah, interview? yeah, 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 I did see that. It was on YouTube. Or it is on really? YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. He loves Muslims too. He's like uh, Karen Armstrong, Muslim lover. 
she was raped by a Muslim when she was a very young child, supposedly. You know what I really thought was going to happen? I thought I thought they were actually going to say I that Eisenman that was the righteous teacher. That's what I actually thought was going to happen. I oh thought, like, yeah, the, man. The scene really, guy yeah. was actually going to claim that Eisenman was the righteous teacher. Well, the Essenes apparently, like, some of them turned Manichae and brought that back. As we found out from Brother Shimon. What do you think about Jesus being King Tut? Yeah, I think I think what happened there is that, like, the, the, uh, the Essene group was probably like, okay, this whole Dead Sea Scroll thing's getting kind of boring. We need to move on to something more novel. Manichae! Yeah. Right. Brilliant! Ne next week they'll be Cathars. <laughs> and our guest who didn't make it will be the leader. <laughs> Actually, he'll be the, the great power from the distant, invisible realm, the Nether realm. Because that'll be the no. Game. That Cathar guy is going to convert to Wicca. He's going to come back on our show. We're going to be asking questions about Catharism, and he's going to be talking about Wicca and like, what the hell? I thought you were a Cathar. <laughs> He was walking in the woods and had a spirit. He had a spiritual experience, and now he's a Wiccan. <laughs> so, um, what is, what what is a spiritual member? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> a member, members only. Sounds pretty nasty. Apparently, the Orthodox Church is members only. It's a big gay gay club or something. Really? It's members only? What do you mean? Like, like to go into their member, churches? Like your member. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let me walk around like this. People are watching right now like, God, these guys are sexy. What is your favorite thing about Lazar? I have to say, I really enjoy his beard. I'm jealous of his beard, and that's why I watch his videos. Because, like, damn, I hope when I'm that old I have an awesome, beautiful beard like that. He should paint himself blue. He'd be much more interesting. And he should wear a little red diaper and a little red hat. Hey, what did I say about Lazar yesterday or the day before? He was like uh, the, the big queen version of Saruman. <laughs> <laughs> the rings. And I, I called it, oh yeah, and then he made that video where he's talking about all this, uh, oh, people and their slanderous foul words or something, and I favorited it just to rub it in, but he was talking about their, their slanderous words and this and that, I'm like, after you just slandered me on my video, called me he, she, it, and I, I thought you didn't think transgender people were it, so apparently... And then before that, you know, some guy was saying he, she, it, referring to God, and I was like, wait, are you calling me God? Wow, that's some funny. Every time he makes a so video sermon, I think he should all heresy. comment and say, yeah, okay, Count Dooku. <laughs> ah, good one. Yes, Count Dooku. Perfect. It's so esoteric. Well, you know, at least now it is, because no one gives a fuck about those movies anymore. Well, no one gave a fuck about them when they came out. But I thought Count Dooku was hilarious. He looked so angry. He was so, so sad then. <laughs> so, let's see. The Zod, the Zod, the Zod. What else is there on him? You know, I just don't even know what to say about that guy anymore, dude. Like, We just have to wait for his next Toll House video. You know it's coming. <laughs> coming soon to a Toll House near you. <laughs> and no one escapes until they pay the last penny. Starring action hero Archbishop Lazar. <laughs> he gets hey. somebody to make an intro song for him. Ticka ticka dollhouse. Hey, he's got his staff and he's like, huh, huh, those pesky Gnostics. Bah! I swear, we have to make a live action film about. Lazar fighting the Archons. The Archons. Are I like how he actually prices. believes that there's like a big problem with like Gnostic infiltrators in the Orthodox Church. Like there's so many Gnostics like infiltrating the Church and trying to corrupt it. Yeah, when in reality they stole I don't know all their fucking terminology from the Gnostics. They stole the Trinity from the Gnostics. 
They stole original sin from Gnostics. A group of Gnostics, not all Gnostics, but um, they stole a lot of shit. It's like ridiculous. And then God is a burning... Do you find any benefit in the concept of the Trinity? Uh, the Orthodox concept of the Trinity? No. No, any concept of the Trinity. It just seems like a convoluted thing. Basically, every time someone brings up the Trinity, it has no practical application or value. No, it's yeah, it doesn't, just like it doesn't really a have a convoluted practical... concept that people are just trying to... You basically just have to explain it to everybody every time somebody brings right, it up. Right, the like, Trinity is just a The Trinity means this, and they're three persons, and but they're not the same, and they're all one. No, that's the Orthodox Trinity, though. The Valentinian Trinity, the Gnostic Trinity is nothing like that. It's just saying, oh, there's an intermediate state, and then there's... It's basically just talking about the three natures of people, like there's hylics, psychics, and pneumatics. That's all it is. It's not really anything that tremendously special. You know, It's more of a speculation. It's a theoretical thing. It, does it have a practical application? Well, once you give it a practical application, you start getting into, well, <laughs> they're fucking hylics. Let's excommunicate all of them. You know? Oh, they lapsed during the persecution. Fuck them. You know? And um, so at, I think it's dangerous as a practical application because it's um, it's demeaning and it's uh, it seeks to to sever any kind of uh, you know like humanitarian ties between people, it, which is ultimately like how would you interpret the fall of Sophia in more of a scientific rationalistic way? Fall of Sophia in a rationalistic way. I think that's more of a question. What does it actually Alex. mean? Fall of Sophia? Well, I mean, I think for Simon Magus, it had absolutely nothing to do with... Well, maybe it did, but it seemed more like it had to do with you falling out of your mother's birth canal. The fact that you were born to even... You know, to begin with, you were born into this crappy ass world which you know I guess you come out kicking and screaming you leave kicking and screaming um, I think really like the the way he saw it was just like you know you were born into this shitty world and that's the fall of Sophia like it's literally you dropping out of your mom you know I don't think originally he really had this pleroma idea you know it's more like seems like a Valentinian thing you know so there's no like <clears throat> There's no uh, macrocosmic correlation. I mean, there may be. I'm not sure. What do you think, Alex? Uh, for Simon Magus, believing in the Pleroma? No. I mean, no what does there... uh, the Fall of Sophia represent macrocosmically? Oh, my, macrocosmically. Well, when the Aeon Sophia falls from the Pleroma, she, it, it, she basically... It's kind of like... Uh, when you look at Genesis, it says like there's the there's the darkness and the void, right? But when Sophia she basically basically splits in two and she gives birth to the god of this world, um, she gives rise to matter. I think that's I think that's her role in. Uh, what is matter? Never mind. Matter. So is Sophia like a sentient like? Is Sophia a sentient entity, or is it more of like a metaphor for some kind of scientific process? Well, I mean, you could take Ooh, it alchemy. Both. Yeah, that's it. That's a alchemy. Good mm, yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. I don't know how to explain that, but definitely alchemy. Well, uh, the fall of Sophia is, I mean, you could you could kind of see it as more of a symbol of the self, uh, like being fallen, fallen into matter and being being redeemed out of it. Uh, but, I mean, the references to, like, Sophia, I mean, I mean, you could see that in the New Testament, like with Paul, when he talks about wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Um, as far as, uh, but I don't think he talks about Gnosticism, uh, mythology, and like in the balance, like kind of, kind of in a more of a setting way. I don't think he really talks about th that kind of stuff. Hey, you know how people have the, you know, how, hold up, I hate to interject yeah. on that, but you know how people have the, like the Orthodox are doing those roundtable discussions. Well, mm -hmm. I think roundtables sound so fucking Camelot that I don't want to do it. So, and square tables just retarded. So <laughs> I'm gonna call it a Gnostic circle jerk, a n r k n m circle jerk. <laughs> good. Because then the Orthodox are guaranteed to watch. All right, I have another. I have another question about like the soul sparks. Do you believe in 
pre-existing soul sparks, and if so, where were they before they came into came into bodies? I guess you could say. Were they in the pleroma, and they're like being attracted by the physical world, and they're being drawn down? Well, look at the different myths, like uh, like the Manichaeans. You have the primal man, who uh, he looks at the reflection of his own form into the primal waters of chaos, and then uh, the which is the mother's water, as, water. as Maxwell says. <laughs> And Maxwell House, Toll House, I mean, it's all coming together. Mm -hmm. All makes perfect sense. I never saw that before. To Maxwell House. I that's that's the Eucharist. It's well, you know, if you look at the bottom of the coffee cookie, cookie, you know, you see your own reflection. Ex exactly. Exactly. This is this is better than just flipping a page open in the Nagamati Library and exegeting it. Let's just exegete our own conversation. <laughs> There you go. So okay, yeah, you see, you see your face in the in the can, right? Um, and, and another word, uh, can is another word for toilet. So you see yourself in the toilet where you pissed the Maxwell House coffee into. Ah, see, and that's why they were eating. There's all these different levels of reflection. You know, it's almost Kabbalistic right. with the four worlds. Right, exactly. It's a reality within a reality within a box inside of a reality inside of wrapping paper. <laughs> on on Christmas. So do you think holiday. when the soul leaves the body and it returns to the pleroma, does it have any individual existence? Does it retain any memories or personality? Well, I think maybe it speaks in tongues because it multiplies itself and it lives in more than one reality at the same time actually lives in three realities at the three main realities at the same time each reality has eight subdivisions kind of like a trickle down effect right so the one becomes two so the monad becomes a dyad so i think that's just simon magus basically saying that at one point he was one personality and then he split into jesus paul and then he split into peter mary magdalene james something else and he, it really just is really the fact that he has like a, a whole cast of characters from a TV sitcom living in his head. You see, one of the main problems I have more of like a right-hand path approach to Gnostic ideas is that it's kind of anti-individualistic. So their sense of the afterlife is that you lose your individuality and you became you become one with i guess the the, the group soul or whatever you want to call right, it right you get Roma. sucked into the monad yeah and that makes me more of like i i fall more in line with the left hand path is that i like individuality and i don't want to lose my individuality when i leave my body well the old testament believes you keep your individuality because um, Samuel was still Samuel. He still looked like Samuel, even though he's like this smoke and mirrors version of him. And he said, why have you disturbed my rest? So apparently, you know, they thought death was just, hey, guy's sleeping, wake him up. That's a familiar spirit. Simon was summoning those. That's what Lazarus was. Jesus is Simon, yada, yada, yada. Alex, so what do you think about the whole left-hand path, right-hand path dichotomy? Do you think that they're both equally valid Pass, or do you think that one? I, th I think it depends on what paradise. And... I think it depends on what you define as left-hand path and right-hand path, because there's so many out there. But I mean, if you want to just look at it as two opposing, two opposing paths, um, sure. Why couldn't two opposing paths lead to the same thing? I mean, that's why you have a fork in the road, and the fork can turn back into one path. You know, you can have two. You can have an intersection where two paths converge into one path. You know what I mean? So. I don't see why it couldn't. You know. Yeah, that's a, one of the problems I have with uh, <clears throat> Lazar's exegesis of the Old Testament and Genesis mm -hmm. in his series. Right. The Old Testament is about you, where he's discussing Cain and Abel, and basically mm -hmm. how Cain's sacrifice wasn't accepted because he did it out of selfishness. Instead yeah, of, and it's instead weird of, like, how he reads that, that in because it's kind of bizarre that that's even a problem. Yeah, I don't think like, I can't um, accept anything that just says deny yourself, deny yourself. I mean, like, what is it actually? I'm trying to think of what it actually says verbatim. 
I'm actually going to look right now because it doesn't it doesn't give you any psychological insight. Oh yeah, it it's doesn't. Just that's a, just, that's it's just, just his God, exegesis. God, God in that passage is just a bigot who doesn't like fat. He wants to have grapefruits or whatever the fuck he was eating. Um, it's just like a picky vegetarian God or something. It's not. It's like fickle and retarded. It's not. It's not like he's basing it on. Oh well, Cain, you know. Okay, let me just put this so Christianity, the difference between Christianity and early Judaism, like Judaism, they didn't have all this psychological stuff. They didn't think, oh, you you committed a mind, a mind sin, you know? You looked at her with intention to screw her. Oh, mind sin, mind crime, you know, like you're in Minority Report or something. And Christianity early on was like Minority Report, like – only not the same because they can't really detect whether you committed a mind crime, but they would accuse yeah, you. Yeah, I think of it's it. highly. It's too idealistic. I mean, you know, if right. you commit adultery in your mind, right? Really? Like, how can you get rid of? How can all you thoughts actually? Com you how can you actually sex? commit adultery in your mind, though? Because even if you committed in your mind, you didn't commit it in reality. You only planned it. That's like drawing a blueprint and saying, "Oh, you build a house. You build a house when you drew that blueprint." And that's another problem. I mean, like, in Judaism, their position on homosexuality is it's okay mentally as long as you don't actually engage in homosexual sex. Well, with, Yet with it's ortho, the same in Orthodox, Orthodox Christianity. Well, actually, it, it it's goes the same up. thing. In, well, according to Lazar, anyway. I mean, no, it's, one, Lazar, it's yeah. one, fur, one further with Lazar, actually. What he says is that um, – and this he actually commented telling me this, so I know this is directly what he claimed to believe, although his belief will change on the next Toll House video. But what he said was that, um, like he was talking about Seraphim Rose, and he goes, well, he was born a homosexual, and he decided just to be celibate, so therefore, you know, he's still a homosexual. And I was like, well, you are against legalism and Judaism and all this stuff, which says this man was born blind, his parents were sinners, he inherited their sin, yada, yada, yada. So doesn't that mean that if someone's born a homosexual and homosexuality is a sin, then that means that they inherited the sin? That's what I kept trying to get into with him because it seems to me he believes original sin, introductionism and all this other bizarre metaphysical jargon, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could look at it that way, but maybe it's not like a literal, right? you know, you don't have the same, you know, it's not the same expression of that sin. Right. That's transmitted. Right. He was, but he was, still. it seems, it seems in the end what he was arguing was that it's the, it's the, it's the committing of the sin. But then yet at the same time he makes videos where he goes, sin, all this sin talk in the way, he makes that voice exactly. In the West, in the West, sin, what is sin? It's missing the target or missing the mark. And I was like, well, then wouldn't a committed act that misses the mark be sinful? I would think so. I mean, the way I was brought up is sin was doing something that you knew, according to your conscience, was wrong. Like something that you knew. It's not something you were ignorant of. It's something that you knew hurt other people. Meaning you can be ignorant of sins. In the Catholic Church, in their catechism, they talk about how there's sins committed out of ignorance where you you know you don't know like say you didn't know. So it's it's a sin but it wasn't intentional so it's not really like you're going to be punished for it but you know you need to work on it and that's like a theosis type thing, a theodicy, you know, you need to try to strive to be better and not hurt. I mean, if you even look at it, you're going to hurt people unintentionally. Like you don't even control everything that you think. Like look into that. Like how much of what you think in a day do you actually have control over? Not all of it. You know, there's so many subconscious thoughts and things that you just don't even, like, consciously <coughs> contemplate, you know? I think that's kind of bizarre that they have that saying in, ortho in the Eastern Orthodoxy that mm -hmm. ma that God became man so man can become God. That sounds pretty Gnostic to me. There's a lot right. of Gnostic well, that, ideas. That is in Gnostic. It comes from, it comes from Clement of Alex comes from Clement of Alexandria who stole it from, the, from the, some sect of Gnostic. We don't really know where he got his Gnostic beliefs, but I think he just kind of picked and chose. He's a cafeteria Gnostic. Hmm. I don't want carrots today. Sorry, Basilides. Oh yeah, I have another interesting piece of information about. I don't want cucumbers about, uh, today. Sorry, Valentine. About the 
the Gnostic Mass mm -hmm. <clears throat> in uh, the OTO right. is apparently Crowley went to a Eastern Orthodox service and he was inspired to create the Gnostic Mass after seeing that service. Wow. That's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything really wrong with the services or anything. I just think some of the stuff they believe is just absurd. You know, but they think the same thing about Gnostics, so. Yeah. But then again, that's because they generalize Gnostics. We all believe everything that's in the Nag Hammadi Library. You know, it's kind of interesting. When I was when I first came across Lazar, I actually thought he was kind of Gnostic. Yeah, he says because some his stuff interpretation of things seems kind of Gnostic to me. Right. Like an ascetic sense. And I was I was actually going to like ask him, why can't the Gnostics and the Orthodox Church reunite? Because they're bigots? I tried to make peace with them so many times. I would, it's like ridiculous. So what started this whole feud, James, with uh, you and Lazar? Uh, well, a bunch of people slandered Transgenderism. Me yeah, all I, did, I, I actually posted it. It's Anybody can see it on the videos. Um, where I posted what I actually sent him. Which, of course, I would know what I actually sent him. I haven't edited it. I can even screen share it right now on my YouTube if I want to. I could find it. But, um, you know, the... Uh, yeah, we should do that. We should just break it down. A live analysis of the videos. All right, let me find <laughs> it. That's a good idea. Or not the... I don't know about the videos, but I'll show you the, the message Shit. I sent him at least. I might have to leave soon, though. All right. Um, yeah, just go ahead and talk, and I'll try to find it right now. So Brad, and I'll screen share it. So how did you find uh, James up in Dora's box? Because he was responding to Lazar, of course. <laughs> 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 Lazar is the center of all of this. Lazar is the reason. Lazar you is the wake bridal chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I hopefully it doesn't cut out. <laughs> Here it goes. What the hell? Hmm. Two inboxes. Oh man, I'm gonna have to look through my sent messages. <laughs> oh wow, Johnny finally messaged me back. <laughs> what do you say? Dumb, he said I kept open in Hangouts. I told him to fucking close it. I knew that's what was happening. <laughs> no shit you didn't get an invite me from me because you're in the Hangout. He says to close it. <clears throat> He's just been waiting in an empty Hangout this entire time. Yeah. It's... <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Well, we'll try to reschedule with him another time. But uh... <laughs> He's new to Hangouts. He's never used it. So... Hopefully he doesn't take anything we just said offensive because well, we didn't really mean it offensively, but let's see. Brad might have. No, just kidding. Throw him under the bus. <laughs> Disclaimer, we love all Cathars. Yep. Even though there's only one left. In a world where there's only one Cathar. And all that's left in the world... Just get the poster from the, from the hey, last Cath samurai. Cathars don't eat meat, put right? Face and put that guy's face on it. In a world where the last remaining person on Earth is a perfect Cathar, and all that's left to eat is a cow. Will he survive? Let's see. Yeah, we really just need to make like ridiculous, ridiculous live-action films about Gnosticism. Like so, like Sophia running from like brothel to brothel, getting raped. That'd be hilarious. Let's see. Yeah, we need to make an actual Gnostic film. Yep. A blatantly Gnostic film, not one you could just interpret as Gnostic with Bruce Willis as Paul. Well, if Miguel can't get the actors that he wants, he can always get us to be in the amp. I, <laughs> I'm going to be Anthony Peake and do a British accent, which will be totally like ridiculous. Except I'm, I'm, it's going to sound more Australian. I'm not even going to sound like him. I'm going to be like, what, what was the thing that I told him, right? Eidolon? What is the Eidolon? It's the Bomian IMAX! 
Like a ridiculous version of it. It'd be hilarious. Let's see. Oh, man. You know, it's I funny when they tried to make that biopic about Philip K. Dick. They're going to have Paul Giamatti playing Philip K. Dick. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh God. He doesn't even look like no. him. I mean, he's kind of trollish. But yeah, I know. Like it was him. like years ago. It was going to be called like Owl in the Daylight. And I guess it got canned. But yeah, they're going to have Paul Giamatti as Philip K. Dick. Terrible. And then there's another one. It's not like... Howard Stern is Tessa Dick. Like that, but Bill Pullman as the Philip mm -hmm. K. Dick character. It's called Your Name Here. Huh. I tried to watch it online because I don't think it's been released on DVD or anything like that, and I cannot right. find it. Okay, this is like so long ago. I have so many messages, so I'm trying really hard to go all the way back to the original message. Okay, I'm, I'm in December 2012 right now. I'm going through like 500 messages. So hopefully we can get all the way down the rabbit hole. Oh, wow, there's more than five. There's like 700 messages. Yeah, wasn't that like back in August? Yeah, it's like August or earlier, maybe. It's definitely in summertime. Very, you have a very good memory. Okay, October, August. Wow, I didn't have much in September going on. Oh, here's a bunch of... Oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. Is this it? Oh, yeah, got it. Whoa. Yes. All right. Y'all ready for this? Let's see. Screen share. All right. Can you guys see that? Let's see. I it says, Dear esteemed Bishop Lazar Pujalo, see how respectful I am? I once watched a video, and look, it's time stamped 8 14, 2012, sent message to All Saints Monastery. I once watched a video in which you gave your opinion that transgender people should get operations to correct their gender. This seems strange to me as it seems to imply that God may have mistakenly implanted a male soul. And notice I misspelled soul. See, that totally shows you the original message. Into a female body and vice versa. Questions. How could God make such a grievous error? Two. Does this not go against the words of Christ when he states that in heaven there is not male or female and there is no giving in marriage? Three. Does this not contradict St. Justin, who says people are genderless in heaven? 4. Does this mean you agree with the traditionist view of Tertullian of Carthage? 5. If you do believe souls are passed from parents to their offspring, he said this is smarmy language. Do you see any assumptions here? Like, how am I being smarmy, Brad? I don't know. It's hard to tell, huh? Then I said, if you do believe souls are passed from parents, if you do believe souls, and this is falling for the last questions, if you do believe that the souls are passed traditionist-wise, you know, from from parent to their offspring, this would be the only way to reconcile your view with that of the apostles in Christ. Therefore, why do you believe a tradition view when Tertullian's writings, all of them, were condemned as not holding apostolic doctrines by the bishops of Rome from Damascus to, Gela or Damascus to Gelasius? If so... Do you disagree with Gelasius simply because you okay, and blah, 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 so there's all that, right? And then I said, note, none of these are accusatory statements, but merely questions, so please do not take offense in them. He cut that out. He cut that out. He cut out the esteemed Bishop Lazar Pujalo. He cut out everything that was respectful. And then I asked about where in Genesis does it state that God made humans male and female, but souls male and female as well, and then he called me a Muslim. And then I said, thank you for your answers if I received them. Feel free to address me in a video response if you wish. God bless you and Christ keep you. Peace and grace be upon you, James. Look how fucking nice that is. Where is the smarmy language? And he comes on, oh, you, you get you, that smarmy language and you're, you're a jerk and you're trying to slander Orthodox people and suddenly there's all these videos about me and there's all this, people were reading transcripts from the video saying I was trying to bang some Orthodox girl in Vegas. The only Orthodox, or she's not even Orthodox, the only girl that was in Vegas was some girl Yusuf had a crush on, and we talked one time about maybe hanging out if we were in the same area, not hanging out like we were making plans, and I was never trying to get with her, she wasn't trying to get with me, she wasn't Orthodox, for one thing, she was a Protestant, I guess that's Orthodox now, kind of confused on what Orthodox is, I'm Orthodox, this... Canada Dry. Ginger Ale is orthodox. 
These eye drops are orthodox. Lighters are orthodox. Black hair is orthodox. I mean, come on. And so they start trying to basically smear me, and they go on this video smear campaign where they get all of these people that say they're Baha'i or Jewish, and suddenly they're orthodox. All these people get together, and they start like saying all this stuff. I think orthodoxy is just a club where anybody can be of any religion, and they go there to hang out, and it's membership. It's like for the Freemasons. You can confess any creed you want and be orthodox. It's perfectly cool. As long as you say, I have allegiance to the church. You know, it's like the Jesuit order, but in the East. <laughs> hmm. So they basically just slandered me and made up a bunch of crap and tried to say I was trying to do all this stuff. And then I made a comment about the goats and the sheep when Jesus is talking about them, the goats being heretics that were martyrs. And then they're trying to say that I said that that was a veiled reference to Yusuf's sister who died, which I didn't even know his sister died. Um, and I don't talk disrespectful about the dead and actually got on Lazarus. Yeah, you missed out on a gale time, Alex, let me tell you. <laughs> Dude, I, I, and, then I, and then I talked about... Um, Irenaeus would be talking about this if he was still well, alive. Didn't I come down on Lazar? Remember, I came down, I came down on Lazar for talking uh, bad about Seraphim Rose, who's dead. I told him you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. It makes you look bad because you're talking about people that are dead. They're not here to defend themselves. You know, it's one thing to, to joke about. It's another thing to be dead serious about... Um, slandering their name after they're dead like why do you feel like you have the guy's dead he he lost his battle <laughs> with life and, and now have you seen his like, orthodox wiki page Lazar's orthodox wiki page it has a picture of him with fucking uh, icon of Seraphim Rose I think that's pretty funny kidding me you haven't seen that dude I swear Seraphim Rose is his Jesus isn't it I have not seen that yeah, I think it's a picture of him consecrating an uh, icon of a uh, seraphim rose. What the hell? That's like Benedict, Pope Benedict, trying to make Martin Luther a saint. Just a little creepy. You know, why don't we just make wait? Benedict tried saint. to make Martin Luther a saint. Yeah. The cat, the whole church opposed him, so he was like, "Ah, forget it. I'm not gonna speak ex cathedra." Really? Like this. Yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the most retarded thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> well, that should be a relief to the Orthodox. That that's the most retarded thing you've ever heard in your life. Didn't he like forgive like the Cathars or something? I, don't I think know. I was reading something about that. He might have. He was progressive, more progressive than these other guys, anyway. Man, my hair feels so Gnostic today. <laughs> it feels rejuvenated, resurrected. Yeah, I rather just, I feel like I just want to listen to you guys, Bab. Just kind of go back and forth <laughs> because I kind of feel like I'm interrupting for some reason. It's a Gnostic porcupine. Wow. Yeah, the interaction between you and Lazar is pretty much how e how Irenaeus debated the Gnostics. Right. Yeah. That's how he doesn't it listen to anything I say. Exactly the same. He, can't, he can't validate. Everybody thinks it's like this, like epic, like dramatic thing, and then it's just like a YouTube like debate. Right. People got so dramatic, dude. I was like, wow. <laughs> and then now they he decided one day he's just gonna come back and comment on my video, even though he's blocked me because he's a pansy. I've never blocked him. And that, the other day I decided, or it might have been yesterday, I was like, I'm just gonna block everyone who commented on this video. Except for if they're Alex or you, if you're on there. And I was like, I'm just going to block everyone else. I don't give a fuck who they are. So I blocked Mr. Dormouse or whatever, and <laughs> Asalaam Alaikum messages me and basically begged for peace between, or sued for peace as they used to call it, um, you know, five, 800 years ago. But uh, he sued for peace. And I said, okay, fine, I'll unblock Mr. Dormouse if he resubscribes to me. Fair, fair compromise, right? And so we let bygones be bygones. And I told him, don't ever comment on that video again, or you will be permanently blocked. <laughs> it's just annoying seeing comments. The people who comment on your videos are so boring. I know, right? 
I think so too, man. They leave stuff where I'm just like, I'm not even gonna respond to that because it's so. And then there's other ones where they just sit. and then okay, no, no, forget that, forget all that. I mean, there's ones I don't want to respond to, but I do. But Lazar goes at the start of his video. Some videos are not, or some questions are not worthy of a response, such as these ones. And then he responds to them. I'm like, they're not worthy of a response, but you're gonna respond to them. That's class. You're a class act. You know what? I'm going to eat Nestle cookies for now on. Dumb Toll Houses make for good cookies, but not for good theology. <laughs> <laughs> Put some melville grease on that, bitch. Yeah, see? Toll Houses make for great theology, see? But not... Oh, no. Oh, wait, they do make for great theology. My bad. Um, so... Brad, what do you think of ayahuasca and uh, ascending into the eighth heaven and seeing Therian throw? I don't know. I've never, I've never, I've never uh, tried that drug before. Okay, here's the plan. This will wrap up the episode right now because I need to go to bed. But the plan is we want to get a Gnostic get together going. I don't know when. Probably within the next couple years at least. We want to get one going where we can like all meet up somewhere, do ayahuasca completely in the dark, and everyone, please bring your chastity belt just in case like ayahuasca makes you do like weird orgy things or something. You never know. Like that's a joke, but no. We'll, we're gonna go play laser tag. Yes, laser tag. We're gonna bring it back on ayahuasca, and we're gonna see if we battle archons. That'll be dope. We should infiltrate uh, Bohemian Grove while tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dress as Orthodox people. Oh, shit. I gave the good part away. <laughs> no, we'll just make up uh, makeshift uh, sonic aprons. Like, really, really <laughs> terrible looking ones. Right. We'll, like, draw on fucking, like, the square and compass with, like, Sharpie. <laughs> So whoever wants to go, get out your pen and notepad and take down this information. No, I'm just kidding. But we definitely need to get something going like that. And anyone who would be down to have a big, giant Gnostic retreat on ayahuasca, please message one of us. We, we want to get, like, at least a couple thousand people together so we can just go out into the wilderness. You know, for, for, you know we need 4,000 Gnostics to go to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> <laughs> we can have, we can make a cult. Ascension a cult. Uh, and we have to do it on Ascension Day. James, we need to make a cult. The An Arcanum cult of Gnostics. Yep. We, we, join join our cult. Join our cult. <laughs> Believe we should draw our cosplay was. swords and take back the Temple Mount. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. We have a Gnostic crusade to get laid. No. <laughs> <laughs> We'll call by ourselves the Orthodox, Templars with a Z. By young, or, by young Orthodox virgins. <laughs> like, oh yeah, because that's what Gnostics. That's what Gnostics do in their spare time: try to rape young Orthodox girls, preferably you know twelve-year-olds, even though it sounds like an Orthodox thing to do. Oh wait, no, they like boys. Sorry. <laughs> I guess it's not that bad if we're like Muhammad. At least we're not like uh, uh, I don't know Marcus Aurelius or Hadrian. Could be worse. Damn, a little light on that. <laughs> yo, 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 say whatever you say about five-year-old girls, but that girl was very Gnostic for her age. You're right. <laughs> hey, this is the Aeon Arcanum symbol. Maybe right here, because it looks like a cross here. Just get a picture of Jay-Z, cut out his head, and put your face there. <laughs> yes. That's confusing. I mean, sometimes I feel I'm transracial. You know, I wonder what the orthodox stance on transracial is. You know, like sometimes I feel like I'm like this, uh, you know, black guy trapped in a white man's body. It's very strange. You know, I find depose? myself, I find myself uh, singing BB uh, King in my spare time. We need to chicken. post an ad on yeah. Craigslist. Wanted African Americans for Gnosticism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Preferably transracial African Americans who are no African Americans who are transracial white people. Have you ever met black people that are so white you're like, man, he's got to be transracial. He's doing the Charleston. Yeah, we fuck. need a 
we need a mulatto so we can use he him drinks. as a teaching tool to teach the hylic and psychic and pneumatic natures. He's drinking grape juice? He must be white. Black people don't drink grape juice. They drink purple drink, according to Dave Chappelle. No, we need to get uh, we need to we need to go to South America to a shaman and do the ayahuasca thing, dude. Like even if we can only get three people, fuck it, you know, Trinity. It's awesome. The three anyway, Nosketeers. The <laughs> Nosketeers. Anyway, Alex is sleepy. I'm sleepy. I have to be up early. And tonight is the most random Gnostic circle jerk of all history. Yeah, this is, this is our own Gnostic official, expose. This, We're exposing yeah, this ourselves. Is not, this, this is what Gnosticism official, is really all about. This is not A on Arcanum 6. It's not an official A on Arcanum. This is just us actually just hanging out and talking stupid. So we figured we'd give it a Gnostic A on Arcanum intro. I mean, after all, I can't be on camera without a an Arcanum intro. And next time, I'm going to have Toll House Cookies going to be like, brought to you by Toll House Cookies. And Maxwell House. Anything else with House? The show House. <laughs> and the song Madhouse by Anthrax will be playing. Next week, we will not be interviewing a Cathar. Yeah. Watch, and then it happens. Oh, yeah, because he's going to be a Wiccan next week, right? No, hopefully we can actually get him on next week, and we could do our planned show, which has our nice little Legend of Zelda background that I worked so hard on that I stole from some random person online and then added A on Arcanum on it. Oh, well. Who cares? <laughs> well, my clothes need to be taken out of the dryer, and I need to go to bed. So. Yeah, me too. Thank you for tuning in to the Hero Fans of the Temple of Gnosis, broadcasting live from a shipwreck called Aeon Arcanum. On this Aprilist 18th in the year of our deadbeat dad, 2013. Aeon Arcanum is not endorsed or funded by our contic entities, nor do we accept sacrifice. Hopefully we slapped the highlight Kool-Aid taste out of your mouth or bored you so bad you went to sleep or made you laugh so hard that you your appendicitis you got appendicitis, yeah. So um don't call us from the emergency room asking for donations cuz we don't do donations either. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Brad, and thank you for being here as usual, Alex. Even though last time was the one episode you were barely here, <laughs> which was weird. Yeah, but it went it, it went without a it went off without a hitch or whatever they say. Um, yeah, he was awesome. All right. Well, we had a viewer, which was bizarre, and we st are still there. It's it's Lazar. Lazar. Oh my God. It is. <laughs> Because he said name. he said he can't wait for our next little Gnostic roundtable or whatever he said. I don't know. Anyway, may Gnosis light your path. <laughs> Peace out. Peace. <laughs>